Good morning, guys. So this is part four to encouraging you with the word of the Lord. Just reading the Bible scriptures to you guys. Um, I'm just going to dive right in. <laughs> I'm kind of just getting up. You guys will probably get the video later on in the morning. But Psalms 3410 says, The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The next one I'm going to read is Galatians 3.13. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Everyone is still asleep, so. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone who is hanged on the tree. In verse 14 says so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith so that's Galatians 3 13 through 14 and the other one we just read was Psalms 30 14 and I'm still on the computer guys for what these videos because we have so much to read it's just um I'm coming from the computer so Deuteronomy 8 18 says you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day the next one is John 1 2 I'm actually going to read John 1 verse 1 through 2 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God Proverbs 22 verse 4 is the next one excuse me guys Proverbs 22 and guys I always encourage you guys you can read them in full context we have videos of reading them and studying them in depth if you've never listened you can or you can just read it you know for yourself we just focus on these particular scriptures for this series so Proverbs 22 4 says the reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor in life in Psalms 23 is our next one and it says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever so the next one we're going to read is Psalms 84 11 and it says for the Lord God is a sun and shield the Lord bestows favor and honor no good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly amen and we're going to read Nehemiah 13 too. Um, like I said in the other videos, if at any point you guys want to pause and take notes, you can. Or you can just email me and I'll send you the scriptures. I'm not leaving anything in the description box um, or comments really for these, um, these, these four parts for these videos. Actually, let me read um, Nehemiah 13, 1 through 2. And it says, On that day they read from the book of Moses in the hearing of the people, and in it was found written that no Ammonite or Moabite should ever enter the assembly of God, for they did not meet the people of Israel with bread and water, but hired Balaam against them to curse them. Yet our God turned the curse into a blessing. And like for many of these, we have in-depth studies and teachings um, on these Bible verses, you know, so... 
Luke 13, 11 through 13 is the next one. Bear with me a second, guys, because I want to read that one a little bit more. I'm actually going to read Luke 13, 10 through 17. It's talking about a woman with a, um, the, the spirit, the demonic spirit, like of an infirmity. So now he was, he, okay, so in verse, in verses 1 through 9, it's talking about repent or perish. Um, the parable of the bare fig tree, but we're going to read 10 through 17. So now he was teaching, this is Jesus, in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a disabling spirit for 18 years. She had a spirit of infirmity. She was bound by Satan for 18 years. She was bent over and could not fully straighten herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are free from your disability. This is from the ESV. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and she glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue, indignant, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the people, There are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be healed, and not on the Sabbath. Then the Lord answered him, You hypocrite, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey? from the manger and lead it away to water it and ought not this woman a daughter of abraham whom satan bound for 18 years be loosed from this bond on the sabbath day as he said these things all his adversaries were put to shame and all the people rejoiced at all the glorious things that were done by him and give me one second guys because i need to write that we read a little bit more for that one Okay, our next one is John 15, 1 through 2. John 15, 1 through 2. Hold on one second, guys. I don't want to pause the video or anything. Because I don't want it to time out and I have to re-record. John 15, 1 through 2. He's talking about the vine and the branches. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Next, we're going to read Proverbs 13, 17. Thank you, Jesus. It says, um, A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a trustworthy envoy brings healing. Psalms 41, verse 1 through 3 is the next one, guys. 1 through 3. It says, It's for the directive music of Psalm of David. Blessed are those who have regard for the weak. The Lord delivers them in times of trouble. The Lord protects and preserves them. They are counted among the blessed in the land. He does not give them over to the desire of their foes. The Lord sustains them on their sick bed and restores them. From their bed of illness so that psalms 41 1 through 3 nehemiah 2 20 is the next one i had the ac turned down a little bit guys so that's the ac y'all are hearing so i answered them by saying the god of heaven will give us success we, his servants, will start rebuilding. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. Because um, what was happening in Nehemiah 2, we have a Nehemiah series. Artaxerxes sends Nehemiah to Jerusalem. And then, like, Nehemiah inspects Jerusalem's walls. You know, he was going to rebuild in verses, um, verses 11 through, like, 20. Um, he went to Jerusalem. He stayed there three days. He set out on set out on the night with a few others. He didn't tell anyone what God had put in his heart yet, you know. And he was just going, looking at, examining like the walls and you know different things he was examining, you know. Um, and he was just saying um, to them, you know, we see the trouble we're in. Jerusalem lies in ruins. You know, let's rebuild this so we don't be in disgrace. 
And then he told them about God and, you know, what the king had said. And they were like, yeah, let's start rebuilding. So they began to go work. But Sanballat and Tobiah, which was enemies, was mocking and ridiculing. They saying, you know, what, what is this you're doing? Are you rebelling against the king? And then that's when he answered them. The scripture we just read, Nehemiah 2.20. Okay, so Isaiah 40, 31 is the next one. If that AC is too loud, I apologize, guys. Because I had it low, and it's still on low, but the AC is used to me having it up high, so it's still on the same number. It's just giving me more, um, more cold air. Okay, so Isaiah 40, 30 through 31 says, Even you grow tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. Um, we're going to read Psalms 5.12. Which says, Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Amen to that, guys. And um, gonna, um, the Lord's Prayer is the next one, guys. We're going to read Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Hold on. Let me, let me, um, let me go to the King James for this one. Just bear me a second, guys. Okay, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Talk about the Lord's Prayer. This then is, you know, how you should pray. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Because this is the way I grew up saying it, based off the King James Version book. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That's how I grew up saying the King James one. So what that's Matthew 6, 9 through 13, the Lord's Prayer. You know, when he was teaching his disciples how to pray. So now we're going to go to Psalms 133. Just bear me a second, guys, so I can go out with this one. And click for um, this one. It's a song, the accents of David. It's a song. It says, "How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows His blessing, even life forevermore. Amen." Excuse me. So now we're going to go to Isaiah 26, verse 3. Thank you, God. So Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Isaiah 27, verse 2 through 6 is the next one. And it says, Sing about I actually, let me see about, um, let's see, read about one through six. No, I'm sorry, two through, two through six. In that day, saying about a fruitful vineyard, I, the Lord, watch over it. I water it continually. I guard it day and night so that no one may harm it. I am not angry. If only there were briars and thorns confronting me, I would march against them in battle. I would set them all on fire, or else let them come to me for refuge. Let them make peace with me. Yes, let them make peace with me. In days to come, Jacob will take root. Israel will bud and blossom and fill all the world with fruit. Amen. So we're going to go to Psalms 121. It, it's a song of, of access. It says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does, or some translations say, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Okay, so I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. 
He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Amen. So now we're going to go to... um. Psalms 118, 17. It says, I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him or acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So Galatians 5 is talking about freedom in Christ, life by the Spirit, and verses 1 through 8 is, I'm going to read Galatians 5, 1 through 12. It says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. <clears throat> Excuse me, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I Paul tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. We have a series of teaching on this, so this I'm not even going to break down, I'm just reading. But we have videos talking about it from the Old Testament and the New Testament and why he was saying this to the um, Church of Galatia in this chapter 5. So we're just going to read. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law because they were putting their hope <clears throat> more in the circumcision of the law than in Christ. Okay, so you who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love you were running a good race who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth that kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough i'm confident in the lord that you will take no other view the one who is throwing you into confusion whoever that might be will have to pay the penalty Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. So now we're going to read Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 8. And this is Jesus calls his first disciples. It's not fully that we did a full series on the disciples and everything. But it says, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gethsemane, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the net. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. So let's read Zechariah 8, 12. It's the next one. So it says, The seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit. The ground will produce its crops, and the heavens will drop their dew. 
I will give all these things as an inheritance to the remnant of his people. Genesis. Let me see if I'm going to read that one. Give me one second, guys. Because I'm going to be closing soon. And when we don't finish reading, I'm going to leave below either in the description box or the comment section. Because I have to um, also upload our regular um, devotional theme and Bible reading. So, um, this is Joseph in the famine. And Joseph going to Pharaoh, talking about his father and brothers and different things. But I have on here um, verse I'm just going to read Joseph in the famine, verse 13 through verse 13 through 31. Give me one second, guys. So there was no food. Okay, let me actually just let me read all of um, 47. <laughs> Might as well. So Joseph went and told Pharaoh, my father and brothers, with their flocks and herds and everything they own have come from the land of Canaan and are now in Goshen. He chose five of his brothers and presented them before Pharaoh. Pharaoh asked the brothers, what is your occupation? Their servants are shepherds. They replied to Pharaoh, just as our fathers were. They also said to him, we have come to live here for a while because the famine is severe in Canaan. Excuse me, and your servants' flocks have no pasture. So now please let your servants settle in Goshen. Pharaoh said to Joseph, your father and your brothers have come to you, and the land of Egypt is before you. Settle your father and your brothers in the best part of the land. Let them live in Goshen. And if you know of any among them with special ability, put them in charge of my own livestock. Then Joseph brought his father Jacob in and presented him before Pharaoh. After Jacob blessed Pharaoh, Pharaoh asked him, how old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, the years of my pilgrimage are 130. My years have been few and difficult, and they do not equal the years of the pilgrimage of my fathers. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from his presence. So Joseph settled his father and his brothers in Egypt and gave them property in the best part of the land, the district of Ramses, as Pharaoh directed. Joseph also provided his father and his brothers and all his father's household with food, according to the number of their children. Joseph and the famine. There was no food, however, in the whole region because the famine was severe. Both Egypt and Canaan wasted away because of the famine. Joseph collected all the money that was to be found in Egypt and Canaan in payment for the grain they were buying, and he brought it to Pharaoh's palace. When the money of the people of Egypt and Canaan was gone, all Egypt came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die before your eyes? Our money is all gone. Then bring your livestock, said Joseph. I will sell you food in exchange for your livestock since your money is gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph and he gave them food in exchange for their horses, their sheep and goats, their cattle and donkeys. And he brought them through that year with food in exchange for all their livestock. When that year was over. They came to him the following year and said, We cannot hide from our Lord the fact that since our money is gone and our livestock belongs to you, there is nothing left for our Lord except our bodies and our land. Why should we perish before your eyes? We in our land as well. Buy us in our land in exchange for food, and we with our land will be in bondage to Pharaoh. Give us seed so that we may live and not die, and that the land may not become desolate. So Joseph brought all the land in Egypt for Pharaoh. The Egyptians, one and all, sold their fields because the famine was too severe for them. The land became Pharaoh's, and Joseph reduced the people to servitude from one end of Egypt to the other. However, he did not buy the land of the priests because they received a regular allotment from Pharaoh and had food enough from the allotment Pharaoh gave them. That is why they did not sell their land. Joseph said to the people, Now that I have bought you and your land today for Pharaoh, here is seed for you so you can plant the ground. But when the crop comes in, give a fifth of it to Pharaoh. The other four fifths you may keep as seed for the fields and as food for yourselves and your households and your children. You have saved our lives, they said. May we find favor in the eyes of our Lord. We will be in bondage to Pharaoh. So Joseph established it as a law concerning land in Egypt still in force today that a fifth of the produce belongs to Pharaoh. It was only the land of the priests that did not become Pharaoh's. Now the Israelites settled in Egypt in the region of Goshen. They acquired property there and were fruitful and increased greatly in number. 
Jacob lived in Egypt 17 years, and the years of his life were 147. When the time drew near for Israel to die, he called for his son Joseph and said to him, If I have found favor in your eyes, put your hand under my thigh and promise that you will show me kindness and faithfulness. Do not bury me in Egypt, but when I rest with my fathers, carry me out of Egypt and bury me where they are buried. I will do as you say, he said. Swear to me, he said. Then Joseph swore to him, and Israel worshipped as he leaned on top of his staff. So now, guys, I'm going to go to, let me check, what's the next one? And the rest of them, guys, that we don't get a chance to get to, I'm going to just post them out below, either in the, um, not the description box, the comment section. So just go below for the rest of them, guys. So Matthew 19, 29 is the next one. And it says, And everyone who has loved houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake, Jesus said, will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit, inherit eternal life. Because there was a teaching witness, you know, and all the disciples were like, Well, Lord, what are we going to get? We, we, um, we love everything to follow you, you know. And he was replying back to them. But it goes more in fuller context. So Psalms 35, 27 says may those who delight in my vindication shout for joy and gladness may they always say the lord be exalted who delights in the well-being of his servant um next we're going to read second corinthians 9 7 And it says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And, you know, we have a series on this, but in fuller context, he's talking to the church of Corinth. They talk about service to the Lord's people, generosity and courage, um, and some other nuggets, you know, he was talking to them about. Exodus 23. 25 is the next one it says worship the lord your god and his blessing will be on your food and water i will take away sickness from you and also let me read 26 and none will miscarry or be barren in your land i will give you a full lifespan Romans 13, 8. It says, let no debt, <clears throat> excuse me, talking about love fulfills the law. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Mark 4, 8. Mark 4 is talking about the parable of the sower, a lamp on the stand, the parable of the growing seed, the parable of the mustard seed, Jesus comes to storm. Storm is like 41 verses. Um, I'm actually, if we have time, I'm going to read Mark 4 verses 1 through 8. I know we've come from um, this, this topic before, Mark 4, the parable of the sower. So again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and set, set him in, out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. <clears throat> he taught them many things by parables and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. But the seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still, other seed, this is Mark 4 8, fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. And I'm going to stop there, guys. Um, I have about 
eight more that we didn't get a chance to fully read because this thing is going to cut off um, and only give me so much time when I record on my phone. So those other eight scriptures I'm going to post below. Make sure you guys read them. And thanks for tuning in and you guys be blessed.